Hello, beautiful souls. How are you? Big, huge energies. Are you watching this human? If you are, you've seen such big blasts of energy coming in. These codes are coming in to definitely further your activation, whether you are aware of it or not. So if you're an energy being, which means you have a soul, you've been getting upgrades the whole time. <clears throat> Some of that is definitely coming to a fever pitch. And so uh, you want to rest when you feel like you need to rest. You want to hydrate more than you ever have because the hydration helps the crystalline cells and the DNA further activate and pull in the light codes. You want to meditate and or ground or, you know, both is better. If you're not one that likes to meditate, just being outside, um, feeling your soul alive is a connection to source. And that is also a meditation. I definitely invite you to do that. It will pay off in spades. So today's video is going to be um, another video follow-up to a um, podcast episode from Truth Resonates Podcast. Um, this was episode 11 and the title was, um, fundies, witches and family. Oh my. Um, if you're looking for the podcast that would have dropped yesterday, the 19th, I didn't do one. I was advised by Archangel Metatron to take, um, like a summer schedule for about a month and to do podcast every other Friday for a month. So, there will only be two podcasts coming out over the next three weeks. And so um, stay tuned. Today is um, it's a great disclosure. I feel, of course, I'm biased, but you know, when I live it, this is my life. And I, this is um, episode is beginning of the year. So January 2024. Um, all of these things occurred for us months and months and months ago. And we were not able to talk about them at all. And of course, things have continued to change and update. And as the frequency was, has risen uh, of Christ consciousness frequency, people are able to now receive these messages in a way that they were not before. Because of course, not everyone is waking up at the same time. And that's okay. It happens in ebb and flow and um, we cannot force anything. We do not have control over anyone else. And so if you were one that's kind of been with me for the entire journey, I do invite you to go back to some of my older videos and um, to where you kind of feel, you know, with your higher self, where are you guided to share? Pull a video out of my archive and share it for, for many in their now moment is exactly what they need to hear. For you, it was nine or 10 months ago, and that's okay. The information is as valid today as it was then. So we also have um, my book, Sold or Soulless, available on Amazon and ebook or paperback. And so I invite you to check that out as well. Um, more books are in process, but there's only so much time in a day, right? So let's dig into this. This was episode 11 of Truth Resonates podcast. Of, again, the podcasts are available any platform you get podcasts on. And I appreciate you listening if you are. Leave me um, a comment, fan mail, review if you have that option. Not all of them have that option. Thumbs up if you want. And if you really dislike it, thumbs down. But definitely tell me what you disagree with. I want to engage with you. I just ask that you're respectful like I am. So in this latest podcast, I went back and I, I had to um, have a, a bit of a disclosure. So this is back in January. So this was back after we had a big purge of crew members from our rooms. Now, it's more than probably what you see in other telegram rooms where um, for whatever reason, they get rid of members um, based on their criteria. Now, my criteria has stayed the same from day one through guidance from source creator, Mother Sophia. And it is this, I will only engage with beings with a soul of the light and an alignment to source. Now, 
there are some out there who like to say it's a violation of a universal law to ask about someone else's soul status. And that's not true because that's how you discern who you're supposed to have in your circle and who you're supposed to share your energy with. So if you believe that you're not supposed to ask those questions, you're first of all buying into fear mongering. And the, those that are saying that just don't want to be found out. I want you to think about that. Um, those that have nothing to hide, hide nothing. You can always ask your higher self about my soul status or uh, anyone else's that you want to engage with. And I highly recommend you do that. When you ask the question, you will get an answer. It's not going to be loud with a microphone. It may be soft, maybe just a feeling in your gut because you may be blocked in other areas where you don't receive messages via your clairs and you're kind of blocked from your higher self at this at this time because you haven't been cleared, but your intuition and your gut cannot be messed with. It's always on and it's always working for you. So tune into it and don't discount what you feel. Honor it. So as I was doing this, this was the message shared in the Telegram group because suddenly we we lost several, um, several, several members. Commander Andalusia removed crew members after the souls of these humans decided while on Starship Baba in New Jerusalem to collaborate with dark powers against our mission success, the Guardians, and ultimately all crew. This was at the time, and even thinking about it, it's tough because on a soul level, the divine soul had uh, coupled up with these humans, either upon their arrival in this live stream or as a walk-in, our family, they are my soul family. And again, I believe I've said this uh, in video before, but if not, I'm saying it now. It's, it's very powerful to connect with your soul family because uh, you soon realize that you have in, engaged in many, many lives together and therefore many, many highs and many, many lows. Uh, most of us have been through uh, very horrific live streams because th those were our soul contracts, um, partly based on who our parents are in some incarnations and definitely based on our, our level and lineage and, and power. And so we were targeted every single live stream. And so when we came together, I had the false idea, pretense, that since we had come through so much together, that nothing would tear us apart. Like like nothing in this life would compare to, you know, um, being accused of being evil witches and burned at the stake or beheaded or tortured. Um, I mean, us had our, our soul fractals trapped inside crystals, who which were held underneath water. I mean, there's all sorts of, of devious things that had been done to harness our power and keep us from our power. So I really did feel once connecting with our soul family members as they came on, as they contacted me and came into the groups and everything, that it was a done deal. Like nothing would sway them from this beautiful, um, prophecy fulfilling and the mission, which is very, very beautiful and loving and compassionate and all the things that people do say that they truly want out of life and their motivating factors for doing things. But I, I learned that that's not always the case because free ways, goic minds and dark on those is very powerful. So I'm going to break down a little bit of just how I delivered this. So I wanted to make sure that they knew that there were definite events that had taken place that caused me to enforce my healthy boundary, right? So there were common characteristics that all who conspired against us that they all shared, a huge ego and a lot of judgment. They were not dealing with or digging into their shadow work and this opened up the window of opportunity to be manipulated. We know this now. Um, if you are being, dealing with a, a aspect, a layer of your shadow work, it literally opens the door to be manipulated and exploited.
by evil and darkness, especially by way of your ego, because you do not see it coming. Our soul family remains soul family, right? So the energy body that is the soul that is with the human has a consequence as much as the human soul has a consequence for their actions. And so we send them love and compassion and kindness, but in reality, um, you know, their consequences to their actions are definitely a, an issue. And so they're still our soul family, no matter what transitional phase they happen to be in, but we have to let it go because we have to understand that we can't do it for them. And that's true of any family, any being. We can't save other people. We have to all save ourselves and then collectively come together. And that's been a, a big misconception. There are souls that were in those situations required healing and we'll need to go back into a 3d third dimensional or fourth dimensional um environment to their training at some point now that doesn't necessarily mean um like a, a full dream because already in i had some of these souls back so they they were given a consequence they were basically demoted for lack of a better term that they had to do the work the work and they were allowed to come back with a patient basically and i'll and i'll tell you something this is um this is definitely disclosure i don't know that anyone really knows this but um there is a there is a um social media person He's got a presence uh, on on multiple different platforms. I believe I haven't really seen anything of his for a very very long time since he lost his soul. Um, but he uh, did the walk to Lord Sananda for a very long time, and he was doing uh, for the active. Um, but he was a big personality and very much in his ego, and um, Things kind of went off rails that one, and uh, I used to connect with Lord Sananda quite frequently, and then he was just gone, and so I asked Mother Sophia, and at first she didn't want to talk about it, and then um, some time went by, and Lord Sananda's name just kept coming to my mind, which my strongest Claire is Claire Cognizant. And when things drop into my mind, it's for a reason. And so I asked again. And at that moment in time, I was able to know. And um, she allowed him to connect with me. And he told me, Lord Sonda told me that he had blurred the lines of healthy boundaries. And that he was himself having to be a like probationary role. And had to, um, you know, because... There were things that transpired in the human that he was with um, that was avoidable and should have been guided against, but it was allowed. And so um, he was pulled out and Mothers of Human Probation. Now, as a hierarchy, um, Lord Sananda definitely answers to Source Creator, but also to Mother Sophia. And it is directly beneath them is Lord Sananda and then Archangel Metatron and Poseidon. And so, um, yeah, he had consequences. So there's always rehab. There's always love, forgiveness, and gratitude. But that doesn't mean that you go through um, because of a name, a title, an affiliation without consequences to actions. So... Our, soul, our sibling souls had to go through their rehab, had to be healed from the, the dark contamination that, that transpired in the human that they were with. And again, it's all because of the ego, the judge that resides in people's um, MO that they don't let go of. Well, you can let go of your ego fully and completely. 
it's not necessary to live contrary to popular belief. Um, and you can fully and completely let go of being a judgmental being if you fully and completely go through your shadow work. It's something that you realize as you go through that. And no one can do that for you. So um, source creator and Mother Sophia alone determined the consequences and the fate of these soul siblings who uh, betrayed our trust and betrayed our loyalty and they were family. So, uh, so we would not have any say in it because it's very blurred and we had deep love and, and deep compassion and we were very, very hurt um, by some of these actions. And so it was definitely taken out of our hands. So I asked each crew member that remained to lean on each other and to speak up their questions, to bring them to the group, to make sure that it didn't plant seeds of doubt or lack of faith or fear in any way, shape or form within them out of, um, you know, not being able to talk about it. I wanted to make sure that they knew they could speak about what happened and ask questions. And if I was able to answer them, I definitely would. So simply put, I let them know that the strongest of the soul family had endured that test and stayed in alignment through all the struggles. And I was very appreciative and grateful, um, but that together we would be and continue to be unstoppable and, you know, love you many blessings, Lucy. So if you recall, one of my sisters, Anna, um, is the one of her incarnations was as uh, Sarah, Yeshua, and uh, Maggie's oldest child. And uh, I was one of the siblings in that family as well, uh, one of the 17. But, but Anna was Sarah, and Sarah was the oldest. And so um, if you recall from the other videos and podcasts, we were able to release Anna's soul fractal. She had major soul fractals that had been held by many dark strongholds. And um, the when we did that, that pulled their power source away from them, right? So they had been harnessing the power of the essence of Sarah for eons. And when we cleared that, removed it, rescued those fractals and allowed them to go back to the archangels to be healed, it was definitely noticed. Um, so the attacks on Anna, in this now moment, um, became relentless. And many of the other guardians as well, we all started receiving negative energy attacks because our energy signature was like a fingerprint on that mission. And um, you are definitely able to be tracked by your energy signature by other beings. So with all the attacks, we, you know, would dive into the who's and the why's and the where's. And we ended up learning a lot more. So every mission has always led to more disclo disclosure and discovery and more missions. And so what we, what we ultimately learned by way of them relentlessly attacking Anna is that um, many of our accepted household day-to-day -day objects um, that we have in our life, like glasses, um, phones, uh, bracelets, rings, necklaces, clothing, bedding, sheets, picture frames, wiring in your home, electronics, laptops, candles, light, anything, right? We're energy and everything in our envi entire environment is energy. Anything that's energy can hold more energy. So all of these things were cursed, had been, some of them had been uh, pre-planned, pre-programmed, timed and triggered curses from gosh knows how long. Many of them we uncovered as old world curses, um, if that gives you an idea, like back with the Druids. And so um, this began a massive clearing. So we started clearing, of course, our own spaces and then once we were successful in that, we started clearing massive spaces. So we would do like all the items I mentioned for the entire world. And of course, we had trillions of souls being released because they had been 
these soul fractals have been trapped in all these items and in our pets, you know? So we, we continued to do that and we made it a, a huge focus that we, uh, multiple times a day with great intention crossed over all these souls to the archangels to, um, to heal them. And then we started getting, um, some of the intentions at night. We were advised to set our intentions at night, um, that when our avatar would rest, when we'd put our head on the pillow, you know, your energy then travels and, uh, that we would actually set our intentions to gather in a 5d location where we could all gather together, a rest and recharge and get healing because we were doing so much just around the clock that, um, that became, um, our respite. And, um, a couple of times during these in, you know, intentions set to meet the guardians together in one of our 5d locations, I would wake myself up laughing because we were having such a good time. Now in my life, I can tell you that I don't remember ever waking myself up laughing and I've woken myself up crying before, but not laughing. And this happened on two different occasions. And so, um, it makes me giggle just thinking about it because it was just such a beautiful way to wake up. Like you're, you know, that you're like in that in between where you, something really, really funny happening and you remembered who you were with, but I didn't remember specifics, but it was just hilarious. So that was how we were helping each other to heal and because we were able to go together and we were totally protected and um everything was just better the next day when of course each day again was more missions and and more work that needed to be done energetically so the attacks continued and many of us day after day were motivated um from our ascendant masters and archangels to just beef up our protections and become really more comfortable with layering and changing things up and so that nothing ever stayed the same um because i've said this many many times i, I can't stress it enough um the evil that we deal with is not stupid they're just evil and so they're very creative we, they've got eons of history too to pull from and so we have to be, we had to up our game. And so we were given information from the, the library of Alexandria through the archangels, um, all of that information, that information stored within the library of Alexandria had been saved prior to the, it being destroyed. And the archangels have possession of all of that. So they were able to give us um, clues because in spell casting, in incantations, it's very important in order to reverse it to have the proper wording because that is the actual basis of the spell is the wording along with the intention and the energy. And so without any one of those characteristics, you could fail or not completely remove things. So they're able to give some of the oral, uh, so, to, so to speak, and to really unravel a lot of these very, old incantations that were placed upon um property and uh landscaping like trees and and uh, things that were had been in place for many 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 years and uh we were able to clear things in a way that was super meaningful not just for our being but for the land um hunamatea the animals and uh i know one thing that we did was immediately felt what we discovered that the ravens had been as a as a group like as a species the ravens had been contracted to be messengers of witches messengers messengers of darkness that was not their intention they did not want to do that some did some most didn't and so we freed them of those contracts and agreements and uh, we had already released so many um, and really destroyed so many covens that the ones that they used to serve no longer existed anyway. And uh, right after we did that, we just had so many uh, arrive on the property. Like they were everywhere and they're talking and talking and talking. And they they do not want to be referred to as a murder. 
I don't know if you realize that, but a, a group of them together is con- it's considered a, a murder of ravens. They didn't want that. They'd rather be called a flock. And so we said, so be it. We will change that too. So we had a lot of positive things come about where we were just trying to clear again um, in, in layers and levels that we never even knew existed. And of course, the byproduct of that is is souls are released, contracts are ended, agreements are ended, and freedom, freedom for all affected. So <clears throat> we slowly started to uncover and allow these truths about some of the attacks of what was happening with Anna because her home and property seemed to be attacking her viciously. Like I know when I first heard it and I dealt, I dealt with her quite frequently. I was like, what? But I didn't discount it. And I definitely stayed away from judgment. And I'm like, this is real. We have to figure this out. Like it may not make sense to my human mind right now, but it doesn't mean it's not happening. And so more and more and more things came out. We we realized a great amount of energy, positive energy had been in this physical location where Anna resides in this life stream. And because of that, it's just like any super bright light gets targeted. You're, you know, definitely. And there were things set in place here for whatever energy body would take up residence here because of who this land originally belonged to. So <clears throat> we realized that the property that Maggie and Yashua lived on that they referred to as their homestead. It was like their, their home base. Yes. They went all over different places. They went to the grand Can- Canyon quite frequently. They went to Ottawa quite frequently. Um, or the Ottawa area. It was in Ottawa at the time. Um, anyway, this homestead is the same land that, uh, Anna lives on and the whole community around her. And that's why this place was attacking her because all that energy had been harnessed by the covens to really siphon off of any, any energy body that came into contact, but it had also drawn her here. Like she ended up living in a place that nobody understood why she lived here, but she said she felt drawn to it. Now we know why. So it also came out that many of the, um, like there, there were, there's a star for here. Of course that had been, um, harness greatly and then the land had been kind of decimated around it where star forts are usually are so um the green lush full of energy and healing waters it was the opposite because the darkness had taken over that area and like trees won't even grow there like there's just a bunch of dead trees and stumps and hardly anything and everything around it is super green and lush and so we corrected that and um again we were using a lot of the old world druid old world witches old world magic um because that's at the time that all these things were originally placed that long ago and so we uh we were able to work with merlin and morgana and they were able to give us um a lot of understanding about that time frame and about how those incantations work and how they can survive hundreds and hundreds of years um, and I, and I want to say, I don't know of any, um, literary reference or, um, movie or TV show that portrays Morgana as the divine feminine benevolent being that she was, of course, her history was also inverted and besmirched just like me, um, because she was so powerful and she was such a great healer and her and Merlin are twin flame souls. So that was never, um, that was never really divulged as far as I'm aware of in our relevant history. So on January 5th, um, Father Yogananda and Mission Control gave us the following message. You all are doing a great job 
Remember to be vigilant with your protections of yourself and your families. I know that some of you, especially my family, are tired of being attacked, but yet you stay the course. Relief will come soon. Please don't get discouraged. And I know all of you have your moments, but process the emotions. Let them go. You've worked so hard and we ask you to continue to call on your angels, your spirit guides, the ascendant masters, the archangels. When you have doubts or you need help, they can help you. If when you're asking, but they can't lead you to it. So collaborate together, celebrate the healing. In this time, <clears throat> that was in the message. In this time, I had been visiting with another soul sister. I had seen her a couple of times prior. This was my third visit there. And um, her soul name is Allie. And she is a beautiful soul who was very diligent once um, her late husband passed on and transitioned. She felt free to discover her true roots and the, answer these these life questions that she had had and um, really rediscover for the, for this life stream, who and what she was and why she was here. She always felt that she was here for a bigger purpose, but had always been kept very, very small on the box of wife, mother, grandmother, like that's it. And so um, she had already pulled away from her church, felt very uncomfortable with anything to do with the church and that had been um, her doing before I ever really engaged with her. And so, um, again, we had had many, um, many visits and uh, she, I, I had done a couple of clearings on her and her physical health had greatly improved. When I first encountered her in physical, um, my very first visit with her, she could hardly sit up on the couch. And I did another clearing on her. And uh, within two days, we were at the track walking a mile. And she did really well. Um, and she continued to improve. And, and, and that's what I really want to stress, you know, that, that with chronic energy blockages and distortions, it does manifest in physical ailments. So it's not that you don't have anything physically wrong with you. It's just that the source is not what you're told. The source is an energy blockage or a distortion, an entity, an implant or multiple of those. And so um, it clearing her is what truly made a difference. She already had a lot of this physical therapy and lots of prescriptions and, you know, family members that were in, in the medical field, pushing her toward more doctor appointments and more of this and more of that. And those things were not helping. They were actually making her worse. So she confided in me in this visit that she um, had a, a grandson, I believe, that had been living with her his whole life and he was getting married and she had offered her home to them so that they didn't have to go buy a home right out of the gate and that she was looking at like a little apartment or like some sort of retirement community or whatever. And when she was telling me about this, she seemed to be very disconnected from it. It wasn't something that was making her happy to think about. And I asked her, well, what would really make you happy? Cause I, I don't really see these options that you're telling me or your only options would make you happy. And she said, I would love to travel the country and see our beautiful country and the Grand Canyon and Sedona and the mountains um, in an RV, but I just can't do it. I would have to have somebody with me and I don't know anybody that would be willing to go. And I said, well, I'll go with you. I'll drive. Cause I've driven RVs across the country several times and, um, and I'm totally a nomad anyway. <laughs> and so I offered that and I, I didn't know if it would be two weeks or two months or, or what it would be, but um you know, to give her the opportunity to, to realize a dream, it was nothing for me over that time. You know, my life would basically continue as it does, which is I follow guidance every day on what I'm going to do and I do it wherever I'm at. And so I had permission to do that with her to realize a dream. So she got super excited. I saw her light up and she thought like for the first time in her life, she'd be able to do something that, that really, really brought her soul alive. So she started to tell her family and her, her fundamental family, and they started to lose their shit because of course they internal internalized her decisions to, to try to actually, um, garner a dream that she's had her entire life 
about them. She, they, she, they made it about her leaving them and not having time with them. And she's been there with them. They won always. And they go off and take their trips and leave her at home. And so, you know, it was very hypocritical. Their, their argument was very hypocritical, but also very human, very 3d and very fundamental. So, um, one of the, one of the children brought over, um, her very fundamental, uh, Freemason husband, and I don't have anything really against all the, I know them to be individually good or bad to any other group, but he was not good. And of course he wanted to debate about the Bible. And I said, I don't debate guys. The Bible is 90% false edits. So I'm not going to debate the Bible with you. And I'm here to talk to you because only because Al asked me to be here and I'm here for her. That's it. So it didn't go very well. And I stayed very calm. Yeshua was in my freaking out. <laughs> like these people are the problem. These people are why. No one is doing shadow work. These people are why no one, they're actually here. They just live within the, the bounds of this book, which is fake. So I had him in one ear, <laughs> these people in the other. And um, anyway, as, it, as they were leaving Allie's home that night, there were definite, definite vibes I picked up on that they intended to harm me. They, it was a very small town and they intended to, uh, circle the wagons, so to speak. And, uh, and so I left, I left the next day. And as I left, well, before I left, I started receiving lots of attacks. And as I left, I continued to receive lots of attacks. And so, um, when this transpired, really, it just brought to life exactly what she told them she felt about the religion. And she told them, I apologize to you. I did not realize at the time that I was um, bringing you into something that, that really truly is not in your highest and best good. And now you fully believe it. And I don't, I know it to not be true, but you have to walk that path on your own, just like I did. And they're just not accepting of things. Of course, they tout the, you know, the the Christian philosophy of, you know, we're very compassionate and kind people, but the truth is that they're compassionate and kind to only those that believe and think and, and act in the ways that they want them to it's control. And so anything that doesn't fall in line with the dogma, they attack. And they're probably some of the most vindictive people I've met in the, in my journey are the ones that label themselves as Christians. So that's my personal opinion and I'm sticking to it. If you, if you want me to think differently about you, I suggest you start to behave differently. So, um, we, we had the, the time frame of the hold my beer battle, which is a different podcast. You can check that out. It's also a video I released about a week ago on both YouTube and rumble. And so, um, we had at, from that, as a result of that battle, we've had a lot of continual, um, battles that we had to defend the, a lot of off worlder attacks as well. So we're getting attacked by the fundamentals. We're getting attacked by the off world witches. We're getting attacked by the off world negative galactic beings that had um, negative agreements with the the hierarchy of the Pleiadian High Council and and Galactic Alliance and all these things that we had cleaned up. So we worked in the greater good. We worked for and through Source Creator. And of course, the more that you go down that path and the more that you clean up, you do get pushback. You have to be prepared for that. And so we were going through all of that. And <clears throat> this is the message that Source Creator gave us on January 9th. The clearing and destruction of all levels of darkness have further collapsed the timelines for billions of beings. <clears throat> there was never an expectation for all of you the guardians to deal with all that darkness. But as your 12th dimensional soul expression saw how your energy and abilities grew with all the challenges put before you, more was intuitively allowed and given to you to say that you have exceeded any and all expectations is an understatement. Now with these giant accomplishments, we mother uh, mission control. So this is now mission control. Sorry. Um, Galactic Alliance and Space Force have had to reconfigure plans. 
<clears throat> many moving parts, 500 D chess. You all are correct in that you have long outgrown the dimension you currently are in. And ultimately the avatars, your soul and energy body resides within. We welcome your growth and transition. There are other galaxies and universes getting clearing benefits from the work that the guardians are doing. They know they knew of you before, and now they have gratitude for the guardians in a very real now moment way. Huge moves. We are all grateful for your dedication. Continued clearing of the darkness. And then this was from Father Yogananda. Many times over the last months, I have watched you, meaning Lucy, act in a moment's notice with appropriate passion, energy, skill, and grace. Never have you been boastful or said, look at what I did. Poseidon told you a long time ago that you were the world's most noble warrior and you didn't believe him then, but I pray that you see that truth now. One day in the near future, your successes with these missions will start from start to finish, will be celebrated. You and the guardians deserve so much respect and gratitude and have it from every being of light in the universes. On January 15th, 2024, the off-world and old-world galactic witches who were responsible for the deepest layers of curses on the homestead of Maggie and Yeshua became the focus of the Guardians. So we had been clearing things as we found them, like, you know, one, at a, one item at a time, um, waiting for more guidance to come in, waiting for more downloads to come in. And it became just like a, a dog chasing his tail like we were just never able to be free of doing these clearings because it was always something 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 so we cultivated a, a better plan a more comprehensive plan that would clear the home the land and all the animals here all the energy beings, all of life in general, of all black magic, sorcery, curses, hexes, spells, along with any active attacks um, that was currently going on, we would clear all that too. And it, on this property, there there's a set of twin pines, just like the twin pines mall from Back to the Future um, and the twin pines TV series. Um. In the back of the property, the old world witches had taken over this property many, many years ago, and they harnessed the power of the land, of course, that was Megan Yeshua's, and they, um, the, the area that is near the Twin Pines was an area where all 17 of our siblings with Yeshua and Maggie had had our, our ceremonies, all of our, our growing up ceremonies and, and many of our ceremonies were down at the lake, but we also had our, our weddings and stuff here. And so there was a lot of energy to be had, but when the old world witches took over, they hunted down uh, many of the bloodline and drove away all the benevolent beings and animals and contracted the ones that were left to do their bidding. And, um, to always have a presence here on this property. They also sacrificed many um, beings, both animal and human, and buried them in mass graves under these twin pines. So we had to, this was like um, a dumping ground at, whenever they had control of this land by the vampires and the witches. They actually worked collaboratively because their common enemy was the bloodline family. And so um, there's a mass, there was a mass grave um, with, with artifacts from the family. So gold artifacts from the temples and a large brown leather book um, that just had simple font on it, but it was a book of missions from Yeshua, Yeshua and Maggie. And that was buried under there too. Like, 30 some odd feet down. And so um, lots of gold was under there too as well. So as soon as we were made aware of all of that, Archangel Metatron came in and said, 
um, the archangels will help assist and we will gather everything using our allies from middle earth and um, the animal kingdom. Now that they've all been freed and cleared, they want nothing more than to help the guardians who help them. And so um, collaboratively, we helped clear the land. So clearing again, Huna Matea in many, many layers and retrieving these valuable artifacts and getting them back to Archangel Metatron, who would help facilitate clearing them of all the darkness and everything there. So that's when we learned that that both inner earth and middle earth had good and bad. We cleared up uh, both of those and the light beings in both middle earth and inner, inner earth helped us and in um, accessing things that were not accessible to us. And they, um, they were able to really facilitate the clearing of, of all of that as far down as it would go, as far down as the evil and darkness would go, um, they cleared it up. So if you don't know, um, there's three layers that are inhabitable on earth, so to speak. So surface where we all are now, and then middle earth and then inner earth and they're all separated by crust but they have their own ecosystem um and really are considered their own dimensional world so we also learned that over in the uk and stonehenge and abbey in england were really a base for the druids and there was many uh, artifacts there hidden as well and so we just replicated our mission that we did here, there, and recovered many artifacts that had been, again, stolen and then harnessed for darkness. And so we returned them back to the archangels and they were all being cleaned and cleared from all darkness and evil and um, and able to uh, restore the, the land, the integrity of the land as well. Because... Long time ago, uh, you know, with Stonehenge, I, I kept getting it that it wasn't of the light. It wasn't of the light. It wasn't, but I knew it was important. I knew it was a, you know, a chakra and then a Stargate portal area as well. And so then once we cleared it, now if you ask, it's of the light. Um, so during this time, Aurora, another sister, had the following vision We, the guardians, each represent an element. The guardians of the elements, water, earth, air, fire, and love. So instead of ether, love is the fifth element. Love is the divine blu blueprint in our DNA and the rules of nature. We, as, the rules of nature dictate that love is allowed to flow, but love cannot be forced. We as the guardians of all five elements can create worlds with earth, water, air, fire like the sun using the love blueprint, source creator, Mother Sophia, and divine Christ consciousness frequency. So we can work with the elements to create components needed for life to exist, basically. And so we can and do create worlds. And I know that for my soul family, many of us actually began in the blueprinter planet of Ghana. And we had many, many, many lives there literally creating worlds and, and um, in different, all over the galaxy, all over universes. So you probably too have had a life in, on Ghana and had a hand in helping to create things. Um, this message came from mission control after that vision. There is a positive energy shift from the clearings done yesterday by you, Lucy and Anna. This will increase the chaos for some low frequency beings. Give a sense of peace and calm to those higher frequency beings. There was a sense of a call to go to a specific area nearby here that you both felt. And there were many trapped souls in that area that were needing to be released they were galactic beings from many years ago from a ship crashing. Please keep your gates open to cross over the souls of the final clearings. Again, 
every time we would clear these uh, places that had been harnessed by the darkness, there was always packed with all these soul fractals of these beings that had, they had trapped their energy there to use it for eons. Um, these being souls are in need of compassion and love at this time. Once they are crossed over, they will be healed in their respective galaxies and space races. So not all beings that we cross over are human or animal or from this dimension, but they got trapped here anyway. And so when the archangels um, pull them through the gates, they then are given to back to their people. And that has garnered a lot of gratitude from other planets that we've never even heard of before, but they contact us and say, thank you. We received our family back and our, our, our citizens back. And we never thought we would have them back. We thought they were lost forever. And so that again was another aha. I had never thought about that before. This is a multiple space event, which has garnered immense gratitude from many space races who are sold now on the guardian's mission of unity for all benevolent races. The benefits of your intentional acts by the guardians and all the light workers are truly being fe felt throughout our universe. There's a greater sense of unity rippling out that is very, very palpable. So you and Anna rest recharge from the energy used yesterday for the greater good. This means make a list of the downloads you get, but don't act on them as the energies settle in the universe and in yourselves. Some will have limited permissions to do things and others will have no permissions to so just be. <clears throat> Send each other healing, calming, love, forgiveness, gratitude to your family. That is always okay without needing to have permission. So then the missions of the guardians in all dimensions have sped up timelines in all dimensions, leading to an end game battle to intergalactic war or interplanetary war. There's nothing to do per se in this now moment, but be aware that this battle is coming sooner and we all know what to do when it occurs. So again, because we were detecting and acting upon these downloads that we were getting, we were able to clear, 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 clear. And this pulled out a lot of the defenses that the dark strongholds have had for a very, very long time that kept time looping. And so when we pull out all these defenses that they had, time was able, our timelines were able to uh, move forward rapidly. And so if you've, if you've ever heard anyone talk about timelines, there's many, 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 many timelines. There's many possibilities and they change all the time, but there's always also been manipulation of time. Time really only exists for us. And so they have manipulated it to keep us on the negative time loop. So um, definitely going against our free will, but the universal laws dictate that we have to rise up in our knowledge and our frequency and and our consciousness to subvert that and overcome it. And that's what we've done. That's why it's important that I share this. And I know that some of it is completely unbelievable, but it doesn't mean that it's not true. It's really, truly exactly how it happened, when it happened. And there have been lots of change come about it. And no, you're not going to see it on the news because when do they report the truth? So, see, I did that. Anna was shown visions that there was a total of 66 cursed books from the temples at the Star Fort and the priests and priestess of the temples under the Twin Pines. How many books were published in the Bible? 66. Then we started to retrieve sacred artifacts energetically from all over the world and the archangels were just zooming in and picking them up and taking them to be healed and so um the the little power pockets that they had where they had all these powerful artifacts held and stored and hidden as they were being retrieved they realized that their power source was gone and then of course we got more attacks but it's okay we learn, we get stronger, we level up. Um, 
they learn more about us that weaker because we take their power and we transmute and transform and heal and they can't get it back. So that's how the light's winning. If you were wondering, this came in from mother Sophia and source creator outstanding. This was the guardian's most powerful battle yet. And that's saying something mother Sophia and I sit here, so to speak, and are quite literally in awe of the monumental negative energy attacks you've all survived. What you, Lucy, said to Anna is correct. You also contracted very difficult incarnations and then received multiple non-soul contracted negative energy attacks and traumas based on your light, based on your soul energy. Your free will choices are to go out as soon as possible. And clear, cleanse, release, realign more areas of the world. And that ultimately has brought you so much more pain. This battle had a very different feel to it. There were no doubts, no fear, no weakness, just divine justice. Unstoppable, unshakable faith. We applaud you all. This justice was long overdue. Aurora. These days are very testing to you, but it's not a test coming from us. There are many negative AI world leaders that have no, we have no influence over, but they come here to corrupt and confuse light beings. So stay vigilant. This quickens and deepens the divergence of the timelines A noticeable shift will be seen and felt soon. The guardians have demonstrated mastery of frequency and neutrality. You all have permission to collaborate on all things, to call in the transitions of the ascension, all protections to be tweaked for the duration. And I'll, I'll stop here and say one thing. When in, he says, call in the transitions of the ascension, I have been working on collapse in our timeline, the benevolent timeline of the light workers. Um, collapsing it by 50% or 75% since um, fall of 2023. And I did so because, well, quite frankly, I knew that we had been on this negative time loop for so long that we had a lot of time to catch up. Like we had a lot of meaningful time that we needed to just collapse down because no one needed to go through more torture, no more negative anything and so I kept collapsing the timeline down I had permission to do it and then they asked me to stop so now they're giving us permission again to speed up the timelines Lucy was told to rest and recharge today but she used energy to plan a campaign to detect and destroy these hidden negative AI beings hidden within the moon in order to clear both Aurora and others in the crew the needs of her siblings always overrule the needs of herself. This is the choices she makes. That being said, the time and the world is very short. With so much energetic shifting happening, we expect you all to transition out of that dimension at any moment. Please work on high vibrational visualizations within your Merkaba. Gather your intentions at a safe place and rest to recharge together. Lucy, we do mean rest. End of message. Again, that was from Mother Sophia and Source Creator. And this was my response. I will always choose my soul family. I will rest when these assholes stop attacking us and you. I apologize for nothing. I would do it all again. I love you all. Lucy. It's like going back in time whenever I read these these transmission notes from these missions. And I cannot express how proud I am of our crew. We go through a lot. Plus, we're all still living in this world matrix. We all still have our own um, hurdles to deal with, our own shadow work to deal with. We all deal with shadow work all the time. We help each other deal with the shadow work as well. But it is such a fulfilling ride to be on this journey. So if you are struggling with negative energy attacks, 
and you truly want to facilitate a positive change in your life, contact me. www.violetlotusenergy.com is our website. We have lots of offerings there. If you're not sure what you need or where to start, just send me an email or open up a chat in that website. I'd be happy to help. Also, if you feel like you are resonating with these messages because you're part of our crew, please also re reach out. I would love to connect in any way that you're comfortable doing. The podcast will drop again Friday, next Friday. So the 26th, I believe, um, at 6 a.m. And it is a doozy. So tune in. You guys stay safe out there. Hydrate, rest, meditate, and ground. And I'll see you again next time. Bye.